Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony and in this video I'm going to show you how to access your Raspberry Pi over the internet and the way we're going to do this is with something called port forwarding. Now if you're not familiar, port forwarding is essentially uh, within the context of your home router taking traffic coming into your router at home and forwarding it over a specific port to a specific device on your network. And in our case, that specific device is the Raspberry Pi. Now on this Raspberry Pi, I have an Nginx web server running and it's hosting a WordPress website. So I have a separate video about how to set that all up. So check that out if that's of interest to you. Uh, but otherwise we'll continue on with the tutorial and setting up the port forwarding. So. On my screen here is the website that I am running off of my Raspberry Pi. If you know anything about IP addresses, you'll know right away that this is a local IP address, and that's a very important distinction to make in this video tutorial, the difference between a local IP address and a, a public external IP address. So this is only accessible uh, on my local area network here at home. If you're connected to my Wi-Fi, if you're plugged into my router, then you can access this, uh, this website. But anybody outside the rest of the world cannot access this website because we have not set up port forwarding yet. So um, let me just show you real quick here. Uh, I'm going to log into this, uh, the Raspberry Pi via SSH. So SSH root at, uh, it's not root, it's pi at the IP address. So 192.168.0.136 password hit enter. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the access log for the Nginx server. So we're going to look at that every second. It's going to refresh and update. And what you'll see here is that the last time the the Raspberry Pi website has been accessed was uh, March 26th at 23.37.29. Okay. So if I refresh the page, hit enter, you'll see the log update. And now the last time the Raspberry Pi has been accessed is 23. Uh, 4120. Okay. And we could do it again. It entered 234130. So that sounds about right. Um, this will come in handy when we're accessing our Raspberry Pi uh, externally over the internet, but it's good to just show you that right off the bat. Now, uh, we'll get out of here. And what we want to do is if, if you don't already know it, uh, determine the IP address of your router. For me, I know the IP address of my router is going to be, uh, we'll open up a new tab here and actually we'll make this full screen again. My IP address for my router is 192.168.0.1. And you'll see a login screen like this. Now, if you don't know the IP address for your router, uh, you can use the netstat command. I'll have a video about that that you can check out. Um, on on Mac or Linux, or if you're on Windows, you can use the ipconfig command, ipconfig command, and that'll tell you whatever the default gateway is for your for your uh, local area network. Okay, so now uh, let's log in. Okay, to the the your router, and again, if you don't know the credentials, uh, you'll just have to Google that, or I have a, another video about how to figure out your router's uh, credentials and all that stuff. So um, check that out. At this point in the tutorial, it's going to be a little bit different for everybody else because every router has a different uh, structure as far as how everything's laid out, how you do port forwarding and all that stuff. But as long as you understand the fundamental concepts of what you're doing, you should be able to figure it out for yourself. So um, what that means basically is the steps that I go through right now on my router are going to be pretty much slightly different for you. Okay. But in the end, all we're trying to do is port forward. Okay, so I'm here on my router, and what I want to do is I typically look under the advanced section because port forwarding is something uh, that's pretty advanced. And uh, for me, I have to, uh, I don't actually do the port forwarding on my router. I'm taken to my ISP to do the port forwarding, which is kind of weird, but it, it works because I've been through here and I've done it. So I'm going to log into my uh, account with my internet service provider. And I'm going to navigate to the section where I need to do the port forwarding. Um, so I think if I remember correctly, I have to go to uh, this, my network, go to C network, uh, go to advanced settings, go to port forwarding, and then add port forward. Okay, so um, the device for this port forward uh, is going to be Raspberry Pi for me. Um, and I'll, 
I have a comment. I'll have a comment to make after doing this uh, because I know it's going to look different for you. So I'm going to forward traffic to my Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's going to be a manual setup. The port number that I want to forward is 80 because that's the port that HTTP uses. And the protocol only needs to be TCP in this case. Okay, so uh, I'm going to click on next. It's adding that port forward and the port forward has been added. So uh, we can confirm that here. So the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, this is the local IP address, 192.168.0.136. And the port, the, the port that's being forwarded is port 80 over the TCP protocol. So again, anybody that accesses my public IP address, we'll look that up in a minute. Anybody that accesses my public IP address uh, over port 80, will be redirected to my local IP address on my network, which as we've shown you is the uh, Nginx website that is uh, the, the WordPress website running on top of Nginx. Okay, um, the one comment that I wanted to make is a, a more standard um, port forwarding page looks like this. So this is a, a, an image that I brought up from one of the older routers that I've used, the Linksys router. Um, Typically, in this case, it would be under applications and gaming, a single port forward, and then you would ex you would fill in the external port 80, the internal port 80, the protocol, you would change that to just TCP in this case, and then uh, two IP address, it would be 192.168. Uh, in my case, it would be a zero and then 136. Click the enable checkbox and hit save settings. So that's just another example about what port forwarding might look like on your router. Now, I mentioned an external IP address. What is an external IP address? Well, um, we can. there's a couple different ways you can figure out what your external IP address is, but Google is a good place to look. So you can literally type into Google, what's my IP? And that'll come back. Uh, unfortunately for me, my IPv6, my IP version 6, we want the IP version 4 IP address. And it'll pull that up for us in a second. So my public IP address is 68992061455. So let me copy that. We're going to need that. And come back to our Raspberry Pi uh, website, which is, again, hosted at this IP address locally. And in order for this to work properly, we have to tell WordPress uh, the new external IP address to operate under. Because, uh, well, let me just show you. Let's go into the WordPress admin dashboard for this. Um, the username is Tony. The password, I'll type that in. And when we, uh, what we want to do in here is update the um, under settings general. We need to update the WordPress address URL from the local IP to the external IP. Okay, so uh, we'll change that in both cases for the WordPress address and the site address. And then hit save changes. And uh, it's not necessary, but we'll log back in. Okay, so now if we look at that, we are operating under our external IP address. Okay. So at this point, we have configured port forwarding. Um, I think the last thing that we have to do is test it out. So uh, I have my cell phone here, and we're going to disconnect from Wi-Fi uh, just so we can uh, use a network that is not the local network here. So right now, we're connected to, to 4G LTE. And what I'm going to do is open up a web browser here and open up a new tab and type in the IP address of my uh, my external IP address. So that is 68.99.206.145. And as you can tell, I was already in here before uh, doing this as a test. I'll hit enter to, to load that page. And it's loading. and the site cannot be reached. So what did I forget? Let me pause here for a second to, to think about this. Okay, guys, I'm back. And after doing a little bit of research, unfortunately, it turns out that my internet service provider is blocking port 80. So here is the, the article, cox.com. Cox is my internet service provider. Uh, as you can see here, 
port 80 inbound connections, meaning uh, the connections coming into my router over the TCP protocol are unfortunately blocked uh, for, they, they say for uh, worms reasons, and I guess so I explicitly cannot host a web server on out of my home network here, um, which is really weird because when I tested this out a week ago, everything worked fine. Now, at this point, I hate to do it, but I, I can't complete the tutorial and show you uh, all the way through to the end because uh, port 80 is blocked and that is like a dead end for me. And that might be the same thing for you too. If your internet service provider blocks port 80, um, then that's not gonna work. And um, I guess the other option would be to do a different port, uh, have a host a host your website under a different port other than port 80. Um, but from what I can tell, the only there I have tried a whole bunch of ports and even port 443 although it's not on this list here um, is also blocked uh, which if you're not familiar 443 is the HTTPS port uh, for secure HTTP connection so um, yeah like I said uh, as long as your internet service provider is not blocking port 80 then everything should work just fine for you. Uh, it's like I said, just unfortunate that uh, my internet service provider is blocking that port. And for that reason, um, I can't bring this tutorial full circle, but everything up until this point still applies as far as how to access your um, Raspberry Pi over the internet. So uh, please, uh, yeah, please, please don't think that this tutorial is a complete failure just because uh, I can't show you that on screen here, um, but like I said, the same concept should apply for uh, your internet service provider, uh, assuming that they don't block any ports like that. So um, hopefully that was valuable for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.